the Volkswagen Beetle. Call it cute, call it classic, but you have to call it the best known shape in automotive history. More than 31 million have been made, and believe it or not, the Beetle is still being produced to this day in Mexico. Where did the Beetle come from? Well, the story begins in the 30s. Back then, Europe had no Henry Ford to make mass transportation affordable. Driving in Europe was a luxury. But one man was ahead of his time, Ferdinand Porsche, the brilliant designer of automobiles who would later found the Porsche Sports Car Company. As early as 1932, the bug-shaped nose of his design for NSU clashed with mainstream automotive thinking. Two years later, Porsche proposed an idea to the German government, a people's car, or Volkswagen. The word Volkswagen comes from the two German words, Volks meaning people and Wagen meaning car, the people's car. And this is a reflective of uh, Volkswagen uh, philosophy today in bringing uh, affordable, good value, car uh, that uh, is intended to provide good basic transportation uh, for all peoples of all kinds. A car that people could afford to buy and operate with advanced yet reliable technology. Target price for mass production, 1,000 marks or about $400. And so in 1936, the first Volkswagen Beetle prototype was born. A grand trial run took place in 1936, a test that covered more than 30,000 miles and finished at Porsche's home in Stuttgart. The prototypes passed the tough test and proved to be ready for mass production. But the war interrupted the realization of Porsche's dream. Only 630 Beetles were produced by war's end. In 1946, British Army officer Ivan Hurst supervised the repair of the plant and started production again, making first post office delivery Beetles, then the more familiar Beetle Coupe. The people's car was back on track. At the beginning of 1948, the 20,000th Beetle rolled off the production line. In 1949, the British turned ownership of the plant over to the federal German government. The concept of a fast, economical, and reliable people's car was finally becoming a reality and the almost indestructible horizontally opposed four-cylinder rear engine whose air cooling principle is illustrated by this old film clip became the basis of the Beetle's success. By 1955, Volkswagen personnel celebrated the factory's economic recovery as the half-millionth car rolled off the line. Much of this success had come from export markets. In the United States, the place destined to become the Beatles' greatest export market, the car was first shown to the astonished viewing public in 1948 on the new medium of television. Are we in competition with you now on, uh, for example, the Volkswagen? As we see, it, the American market leaves so much room for a small, well-proven economic car. Sales didn't get off to a very fast start. The year following its New York debut, only two Beatles were sold. The answer was better advertising. One of the most important parts of the Volkswagen legend in the United States wasn't the car itself. It was the distinctively honest, understated commercials. Even 30 years later, many of us remember this ad about a lonely snowplow driver. Have you ever wondered how the man who drives a snowplow drives to the snowplow. This one drives a Volkswagen. So you can stop wondering. But the Beetle wasn't just a car. It was also a lifestyle. The Beetle was the chosen car of rambunctious college kids in the 50s. The preferred transportation for the flower power generation during the 60s. And the underpinnings for a generation of dune buggies in the 70s and 80s. Of course, the unchanging shape of the Beetle concealed ongoing improvements throughout its production run. Continuous testing toughened its chassis. Strenuous quality control made it so watertight that you had to crack open a window to close the doors and improvements in safety equipment made it a more secure car to drive. In fact, it was surprisingly safe, even when the road gave up. Beetle buffs keep track of the age of their beetles by the changes in the shape of the rear window. 
The last German-built Beetle came off the assembly line on January 19, 1978. One day later, production for Latin American markets began at Volkswagen's Mexico plant, where it continues to this day. Here in the company's Wolfsburg, Germany Museum, a 1938 prototype sits next to a current Mexican-built car, proving that the lovable people's car isn't just historic, it's a living classic.